We start this hour with the cheering news that Nigeria has finally exited the recession. Well, the National Bureau of Statistics announced on Tuesday that the country's nation's gross domestic product GDP grew by 0.55% in the second quarter of 2017. In real terms, this indicates the emergence of the economy from recession after five consecutive quarters of contraction since the first quarter of, this, of last year. An economy is said to be in recession after contracting for two consecutive quarters. And the Nigerian economy slipped into recession in early 2016. And to react to this, we have a financial analyst, Nemeka Obiareri. He joins us now via Skype on TV News R. It's good to have you join us here on the News R. Tell us your reaction to this um, cherry news coming from the NBS. Um, for the first time in over four quarters, our economy has crept out of recession on the part of recovery. According to the NBS statistics, it's about 0.5. Uh, five five percent, uh, which is two point zero four percent increase year on year from the figure of two thousand and sixteen, and of course four major sectors we attribute uh, drove um, the the growth in GDP, manufacturing, oil and gas, and uh, and the agri. Now we don't need to be so excited. We don't need to be too boisterous about this. Um, just like um, the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile, pointed out. You know, he warned last week that a lot will need to be done on the fiscal side um, to, to make sure that we do not slip back into recession. If you look at our economy currently, it's an import-dependent economy. The question we should be asking ourselves, uh, where, what did we do wrong over the last um, six quarters and what are we doing right now? Um, the major driver of this recovery, uh, kudos must be given to Gordon Emefile and his team by Central Bank. They've devised very many disingenuous, creative ways of managing the foreign exchange stability in that market. Because we are an import-dependent economy, everything that happens to foreign exchange market affects every ecosystem in the Nigerian economy. Over the last one year, over the last six months, there has been a bit of stability in the foreign exchange market, and which over time has impacted on every facet of the economy. But now the question we should ask ourselves going forward, what do we do to ensure that out of excitement, out of being too boisterous, we do not slip back into a session. If you look at even the oil and gas sector, I heard something yesterday that even baffled me. Um, the issue of, um, um, I heard that the, the, the NNPC, um, the Minister for Safe for Petroleum Sources, in the, predicted that the price of the white petroleum product will drop um, um, to about 131 X depot for PMS and the other, uh, the, for the other white petroleum products. The question is, what have we done sustainably to make sure that we have dropped in oil prices. The truth of the matter is that what we are, what they are doing at the NMPC is a creative way of managing the prices. We are actually indirectly subsidizing this product. If we have been able to fix our refineries and we are producing at optimum capacity, then we can say yes. Because when we talk about GDPs, we're talking about increase in product, production and services. For the downstream oil and gas sector, the prices that have crashed is a, as a result of N NMPC intervention indirectly subsidizing the product. If you're watching development in the global market, about 12 to 13 refineries in the US has closed shop because of the flood in Texas. These are capacity that are supposed to combine about 10 million barrels per day. What we are currently experiencing in the Nigerian um, oil and gas industry, the little growth we have there, is the issue of Nigerian uh, NMPC indirectly subsidizing this product. As of today, a metric ton of the PMS sells for $625 per metric ton. A metric ton is 1,341 liters. If you use the CBN intervention rate of 306 naira per, 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 per dollar to multiply it, you will discover that the landing cost of that product, X depot, should be around 153 naira. But what the NNPC is doing now is that they will import this product in mass, subsidize it by allocating it to the market as at 120. Indirectly, the Nigerian government is subsidizing to this product by 50 naira per litre. Right. Indirectly, we are spending over 59 billion naira from our federation account, more than we have gone to our federation account to subsidize this product. All right, name, name we a Yeah. All right, uh, ap apologies for the interruption. I wanted to ask, uh, after, especially after five 
uh, series of economic woes now having this good news but then economists like you are a bit uh, wary now of um, you know congratulating uh, the government on this uh, latest development but then how does the government build on this especially in terms of savings are we doing enough and like I mentioned to you the little we are seeing now is because of the debt movement the debt touches the, the creative management of our foreign exchange market by the monetary man policy manager, that is the Central Bank of Nigeria. Emefile and his team have done some good works in ensuring foreign exchange stability. And as an independent dependent economy, we must devise ways, especially those on the fiscal side. If you look at the fiscal side of the economy, which is actually the, supposed to be the main economic driver, we are not doing much in that area. Take for instance, now I gave you three critical examples. For, for an economy to grow production and services, there are five critical areas we must look at. One of them is the cost of fund, our financial services. The other one is the cost of power. The other one is the cost of energy. The other one is the cost of transportation, which everything affects the cost of production. I will give you a, a, a kind of a, a, how this is affecting the ecosystem. If you go to Nigeria Bank of to borrow money now, the cost of fund has gone so high. For a 90-day money, you're talking about 29-30%, which is not supposed to be so. And why is the cost of funds so high? The cost of funds is so high because the, the, the government is borrowing heavily from the deposit money banks, which is crowding out the private sector. Cost of power is still on the high side. I read a report that says price of product has come down. What is the cost of energy? Cost of energy affects everything. The cost of the AGO, as of 2015 January, a liter of the AGO diesel sold for 92 naira. Today it is 170. Are we producing enough for in our refinery? No. We are still importing. What we expect those on the fiscal side of the economy to do to complement the great effort of Godwin and Mefile is to ensure by now our refineries are supposed to be producing optimally. By now, if our refineries have been producing optimally, we will have taken advantage of the shutdown of refineries in in in, in, in America to uh, export refined petroleum products. We are importing. What of the cost of power? We, from the report, we discovered that energy generation has inched up by 6.7, 700 megawatts. But practically, what we are producing is 300 megawatts. Most of the energy increase are the self energy generation by people using other means of energy generation, like solar and all the rest of it. We must do a lot on the fiscal side. Now, we heard that rice uh, production has increased by 80%, that we have met the 80% demand of rice uh, production in Nigeria. As I'm talking to you, the price of a, a bag of rice is 16,500 naira, up from 7,000 as of January 2015. If truly we have covered 80% of the supply, supply of rice locally, how come the price has not crashed? That's the question we should be asking ourselves. If truly, as of 2015, we were producing only 60% of what we consume. If we have moved it from 60% to 80%, logically, realistically, empirically, the price will crash. How come we have been told on the agri side that we have ramped up production of rice to meet 80% of the demand locally, yet the price rather than go down are inching up? These are the kind of questions we should ask ourselves. Right. I am glad that we are moving out of recession, but we must do a lot on the fiscal side. Very, very a lot, many things we must do in that area to drive down the cost of fund in the financial services sector, drive down the cost of power by generating, distributing and transmitting these powers as and when needed, drive down the cost of energy by ensuring that our refineries are working up to optimal capacity. All right. And allowing this colocation. All right, Nemeka Obiari, thank you very much for your analysis. We appreciate them. Thank you very much, Nemeka.